to this presentation. My name is Michael Lampton. We will learn what the mark of the beast is and also how to avoid receiving it. Shall we pray? Our great God in heaven, thank you so much for this hour. Father, I pray committing myself and my friends into your hands. Help us to understand your word and help us to choose wisely. Thank you for an answered prayer in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Friend, how to avoid receiving the mark of the beast. Back in the chapter of Daniel 2, King Nebuchadnezzar dreamed a, a strange dream. He saw a great metal image. When he woke up, he wasn't able to remember what it was. But Daniel revealed to him only its meaning. And also the dream itself. Nebuchadnezzar could think of nothing else after all. He was the head of gold. His kingdom, he thought, stood without a rival. Nebuchadnezzar became defiant. He, he ordered his servants to make a statue all of gold. Not just the head, but the entire body. It was the king's way of signifying to the world that his kingdom would last forever. It was also his way of defying the prophecy God had given through the prophet Daniel. On the appointed day, thousands of important dignitaries in the king's empire assembled to witness the dedication of Nebuchadnezzar's image of gold. Suddenly, a hush fell over the vast crowd. The king's spokesman instructed that when the music began to play, all were to bow and worship the image the king had set up. A warning was given that those who refused to worship would be thrown into a fairy furnace. The music sounded. All the people fell down and worshipped the image well almost all the people in the vast kneeling trunk stood shadrach meshach and abednego these were three hebrews who refused to disobey god by bowing and worshiping an idol word soon reached the king furious that anyone should dare defy his direct command King Nebuchadnezzar ordered the offenders to be brought before him. As the king looked at the three boys, he recognized them at once. They were extraordinary young men with great intelligence and many talents. He decided to give them another chance. When we read from the Bible, it is written, Now, if you are ready at the time you hear the sound of all kinds of music and you fall down and worship the image I made, good. But if you do not worship, the, you shall be cast immediately into the midst of a burning fairy furnace. That's in Daniel chapter 3 verse 15. Sadrach, Meshach, and Abednego 
could see the flames from the huge furnace. They could be no doubt about the king's intentions. What should they do? Friend, what would you do in this instance? Should they disobey the king and leave? Or disobey a direct command of God and die? What would you have done? Oh, it would have been easy to rationalize that. It wasn't hurt just once to bow to an idol under such circumstances. After all, their lives were at stake. Shouldn't they respect the king? Evidently, such thoughts never crossed their minds, for they had been taught God's command from childhood. And one of those commands said, You shall not make for yourself a carved image or any likeness of anything. You shall not bow down to them, nor serve them. That's when we read Exodus chapter 20, verse 4 and 5. Without hesitation, they replied the king, O oh, Nebuchadnezzar, we have no need to answer you in this matter. If that is the case, our God whom we serve is able to deliver us from the burning fiery furnace, and he will deliver us from your hand, O oh, king. But if not, let it be known to you O king, that we do not serve your gods, nor will we worship the gold image which you have set up. That's when you read Daniel chapter 3, verse 16 to 18. Obviously, Nebuchadnezzar was very, very furious. He was very angry. He commanded that Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego be bound and thrown into the fairy furnace. The fire was so intense that the soldiers who tried to throw the three Hebrew men into the furnace fell back dead. What an amazing story. Did you know that this fascinating story is also a type or prophecy of another great test yet to come to God's people? In the book of Revelation, the prophet John uses the imagery from Daniel chapter 3 to describe what is going to happen at the very end of time. Like the three Hebrew boys, everyone living during his last hours will be faced with a similar choice. A choice that will forever seal their destiny. A choice once again involving a counterfeit, a choice regarding worship, a choice about obeying God, even if it costs them their lives. Friend, perhaps the most serious warning ever to be given to earth's inhabitants is warning them about this choice. God considers this message to be vitally important, for he said, if any man has an ear, let him hear. Revelation chapter 13 verse 9. We must listen. If anyone worships the beast and his image and receives his mark on his forehead or on his arm, he shall also drink of the wine of the wrath of God, which is poured out full strength in the cup of his indignation. He shall be tormented with fire and brimstone in the presence of the holy angels and in the presence of the Lamb. Revelation chapter 14, verse 9 and 10. According to Bible prophecy, at the very end of time, people living on earth will be divided into two groups. Those who are loyal to God and obey His commandment and those who worship the beast and receive his mark. There will be intense pressure which will be brought to worship the beast or receive his mark. When we read from the Bible, it is written, He causes all, both small and great, 
rich and poor, free and slave, to receive a mark on their right hand or on their foreheads. And that no man may buy or sell except one who has the mark or the name of the beast or the number of his name. Revelation chapter 13 verse 16 and 17. Eventually, a decree will be passed condemning to death those who refuse to worship the beast and his image. Of the second beast of Revelation, the Bible says, he was granted power to give breath to the image of the beast, that the image of the beast should both speak and cause as many as will not worship the image of the beast to be killed. Revelation chapter 13 verse 15. Many will say, if you do not worship the beast, we will not buy anything from you or sell anything to you and eventually we will kill you that will be the decree but then god will say if you worship the beast you will receive the wine of the wrath of god every person on earth will be faced with the most difficult decision they have ever had to make but god will not allow these things to happen without warning his people. In the book of Revelation, we find the clues to understanding what this power is and how it will seek to counterfeit the worship of God. Let's go back to the Bible. The disciple John wrote, Then I stood on the sand of the sea, and I saw a beast rising out of the sea, having seven heads and ten horns, and on, on his horns ten crowns, and on his heads a blasphemous name. Now the beast which I saw was like a leopard, his feet were like the feet of a bear, and his mouth like the mouth of a lion. The dragon gave him his power and his throne and great authority. We read from Revelation chapter 13, verse 1 and 2. What could such a beast symbolize? When we go back to the Bible in Daniel chapter 7, we learn that the beast represents kingdoms or rulers or powers. Here in Revelation, we find a pictured something truly spectacular, a composite beast made up of all four of Daniel's great beast. So when you read Daniel chapter 7 verse 1 going, you will see there are four great beasts that came out of the sea. Now, in this text that we read, also talks about a composite beast. One beast with all the components of the four beasts of Daniel chapter 4. The beast of Revelation 13 is a power that inherits characteristics of all four of these great world empires. Speaking of this beast, John wrote, let's read, the dragon gave him his power and his seat and great authority. That's in Revelation chapter 13, verse 2. We find that in Revelation, the term dragon represents both Satan and the great dreadful beast he worked through. That is the kingdom of of Rome or the Roman Empire. Speaking of the devil's attempt to kill Jesus soon after his birth, Revelation says, And the dragon stood before the woman which was ready to be delivered, for to devour her child as soon as it was born. We read in Revelation chapter 12, verse number 4. Of course, it was through Herod the Great that Satan tried to accomplish this. He decreed that all male infants in Bethlehem up to the age of two should be killed. Baby Jesus narrowly escaped Bethlehem's tragic bloodshed. Here we see Satan working through the Roman Empire. The prophecy further predicted that this power that pagan Rome ruled 
In the end, give his power, his seat, and great authority to the beast. Did pagan Rome fulfill this prophecy? And if so, to whom was it given? For many centuries, the Roman church used a document entitled The Donation of Constantine to prove its right to the city of Rome. This document, later proven to be a forgery, gave them claim to the church's right to rule Western Rome, both politically and religiously. This document was the basis used to justify their power as a kingdom with the Pope as the king. So the document um, called the Donation of Constantine, you can Google it or search online to find out. In the year AD 330, 330, Constantine moved his capital to Byzantium and changed the name of the city to Constantinople. When Constantine left Rome, he gave his seat to the Bishop of Rome. The Bishop of Rome became the head of the church as well as a king upon a throne. A union of church and state resulted with the church ruling over the state. Vatican City lies in the middle of Rome, the city that was the seat of the old Roman Empire. The Roman church continues there even today, not only as a religious power, but as a political power as well. Almost every nation of the world sends ambassadors to Vatican. It is very important to keep in mind that the prophecy is talking about an organization or a system of theology. It is not singling out individuals. There are great numbers of sincere people who worship God, but do not yet know what you are learning today from the Bible prophecy about this power. A close study of the identifying marks of the first beast in Revelation chapter 13 makes it clear that it is the same power as was symbolized by the little horn of Daniel chapter 7, which we have already studied. So we can read in Daniel chapter 7. The prophet John predicted that this beast power will have a distinguishing mark and that it will try to force it upon everyone in the world. The text in Revelation chapter 13, verse 16 and 17, it is written, He causes all, both small and great, rich and poor, free and slave, to receive a mark on their right hand or on their foreheads, and that no man may buy or sell except one who has the mark or the name of the beast or the number of his name. That's Revelation chapter 13, verse 16 and 17. According to God's word, this mark must be a symbol of rebellion or disloyalty to the government of God. The Bible clearly predicts there will be a group who will not receive the mark of the beast. I pray that, friend, you'll be part of this group. Amen. Here is the patience of the saints. Here are those who keep the commandments of God and the faith of Jesus Christ. Revelation chapter 14, verse 12. Make no mistake, the great issue to which this world is coming will center on obedience to the commandments of God. One group of people receives the mark of the beast while the other is loyal and true to God by keeping all his commandments and maintaining faith in Jesus Christ the Lord. God's people will also receive a mark, but it will be a mark of God's seal. It will be placed on the foreheads of his followers. Let's read from the Bible. Then I saw another angel ascending from the east, having the seal of the living God. And he cried with a loud voice to the four angels to whom it was granted to harm the earth and the sea. 
saying, Do not harm the earth, the sea, or the trees, till we have sealed the servants of our God on their foreheads. Revelation chapter 7, verse 2 and 3. I want that seal, friend. I want to have the seal of God. Don't you? I pray that by the grace of God, you receive the seal or the mark of God. Nothing is more important than that. The final conflict of world history is over the seal of God or the mark of the beast. Is between God's sign and a counterfeit sign. When we discover God's seal or mark, it will be easy to discover the counterfeit mark that the beast power will enforce. God tells us what his seal or sign is. What is the mark of God? The Bible, it is written in the Bible. Moreover, I also gave them my Sabbath to be a sign between them and me. Ezekiel chapter 20 verse 12. It continues. Again, God says, Speak also to the children of Israel, saying, Surely my Sabbath you shall keep. It continues. For it is a sign between me and you throughout your generations that you may know that I am the Lord who sanctifies you. That's Exodus chapter 31, verse 13. God said that the Sabbath is his sign or mark of authority. What does the beast power say? Is a mark of his authority? If the Sabbath, seventh day of the week, is God's mark of authority or God's seal, what does the beast say is the counterfeit Sabbath? The following quotation is taken from a Catholic catechism. Let's see. Question. How prove you that the church have power to command feasts and holy days? Let's see the answer. By the very act of changing the Sabbath into Sunday, which Protestants allow of, and therefore they fondly contradict themselves by keeping Sunday strictly and breaking most other feasts commanded by the same church. Question. Have you any other way of proving that the church has power to institute festivals of precepts? Answer. Has she not had such power? She servants of Sunday, the first day of the week for the observance of Saturday, the seventh day, a change for which there is no scriptural authority, an abridgment of the Christian doctrine. Henry Tuberville, page 58. So that is what the Catholic Church is saying. Sunday worship is the mark of Roman Catholic Church's religious authority. According to her own testimony, she readily admits that she changed the day of worship from Saturday to Sunday. And it goes further. She says, this act is a mark of her ecclesiastical power and authority. A letter from C.F. Thomas, Chancellor, to Cardinal Gibbons, October 28, 18. 95 the roman catholic church ch challenges protestants to show why they have desecrated god's day and turned from the bible sabbath to follow a day that was instituted by custom tradition and the church of rome Remember that Daniel predicted this peace power would think to change times and laws. We read from Daniel chapter 7, verse 25. He also predicted that this power will cast the truth to the ground. 
He did all this and prospered. In Daniel chapter 8, verse 12. Yes, friend, John the Revelator is seeing the same power that Daniel of old had written about. John sees a time in the future when again there will be organized religion and forced worship. Only this time, it will not be a golden image on the plain of Dura. It will be a requirement to worship on a counterfeit day. He causes all both, both small and great, rich and poor, free and slave, to receive a mark on their right hand or on their foreheads. And that no man may buy or sell except one that has the mark or the name of the beast or the number of his name that's in revelation chapter 13 verse 16 and 17. in order for the catholic church or the pope to fulfill all of prophecy it will have to use the power of civil governments to enforce its mark of authority in the middle ages a union between church and state existed and this power will create a replica or image that medieval beast notice another identifying sign notice here is wisdom let him who has understanding calculate the number of the beast for it is the number of a man his name or his number is six 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 in revelation chapter 13 verse 18. let's be clear the bible doesn't call 666 the mark of the beast even though many think it does the bible says that it is the number of a man perhaps more than any other kingdom in history the roman church has been symbolized by one man one office the chief pontiff or ruler of the church is the pope of rome again we must be clear the bible is here speaking about a system an office not an individual person one of the post title is vicaros fili dei meaning vicar of the son of god in the ancient world letters had numerical values as well for example we still refer to roman numerals as a way of writing numbers with letters if we tally the numerical values of the pope's title we find a surprising result the numerical values of the latin letters is easy to calculate that's vicarius fili dei vicarius will give us five one hundred zero zero one five zero which is equal to one hundred and twelve fili will give us zero one fifty one one which is equal to fifty three day will give us five hundred zero one which you equal to 501 and when you add up 112 plus 53 plus 501 that will give you 666 this by itself doesn't prove the papacy to be the subject of this prophecy but with all other unmistakable clues it adds to the certainty of our conclusion yes we can see that the time is coming and it's not far distant when everyone will be required to keep the first day of the week in direct violation of the command of god a directive entitled apostolic letter this domino of the holy father john paul ii to the bishops clergy and faithful of the church on keeping Sunday holy was sent out to churches to church leaders admonishing them 
to press for the keeping of Sunday as a time of rest and worship. Could it be that this well-intentioned letter is setting the stage for laws favoring Sunday of Devons rather than the Bible Sabbath? The letter even goes so far as to suggest that they should work towards civil legislation to make it a reality. Does that sound a familiar thing? It is just a prophecy. It is just as prophecy is saying. A question that many ask is, does anyone have the mark of the beast now? No, but a single person. No, not a single person has the mark of the beast yet. As I'm currently preaching, not even one person has the mark of the beast yet. Now, how do you get the mark of the beast? When the mark of the beast is enforced by civil law, every person must then choose between allegiance to God by keeping the Sabbath or allegiance to the beast by keeping the day substituted by man's authority. Then, and only then, will anyone receive the mark of the beast. To every soul will come the crucial test, shall I obey God or shall I obey man? It is not just a matter of days, it is a matter of masters who should obey, just as the Apostle Paul wrote. Do you not know that to whom you present yourselves slaves to obey, you are that one's slaves whom you obey, whether of sin leading to death or of obedience leading to righteousness? As we read in Romans chapter 6, verse 16, a most solemn moment will soon face every inhabitant on earth. No one will be able to buy or sell who does not have the mark of the beast. First, it will come a boycott, then the death decree. And of those who receive the mark of the beast, the seven last plagues will also follow. Do you see why this issue is so important, my friend? Why it is a life and death matter? Why it is so vital that we choose now to honor God? There is good news for those who choose to honor God and receive his seal. They may not be able to buy or sell, but here is the promise of God. Bread will be given him. His water will be sure. Azar chapter 33 verse 16. It goes further to say, and concerning the plagues to be poured out upon the earth, God promises, you shall not be afraid of the terror by night, nor of the arrows that flies by day, nor of the pestilence that walks in darkness, nor of the destruction that lays waste at noonday. A thousand may fall at your side, and ten thousand at your right hand, but it shall not come near you. Only with your eyes shall you look and see the reward of the wicked. Psalm 91, verse 5 to 8. And as if you might still wonder what will happen, the Bible continues. It is written, because you have made the Lord even the most high your dwelling place. No evil shall befall you, nor shall any plague come near your dwelling. For he shall give his angels charge over you to keep you in all your ways. Psalm 91 verse 9 to 11. But God gives a wonderful promise to those who choose to follow him. Friend, at a time, Michael shall stand up, the great prince who stands watch over the sons of your people. And there shall be a time of trouble, such as never was, since there was a nation, even to that day. Continues. And at that time, your people shall be delivered. Everyone who is found written in the book, that's Daniel chapter 12, verse 1, 
Daniel chapter 12, verse 1. Yes, my friends, God's people will be delivered. Remember the story of the three Hebrew boys in ancient Babylon? Yes. God's law instead of man for worshipping God instead of Babylon's image. Those three boys were thrown into the fairy furnace. The heat was so severe it even killed the soldiers who threw them into the flames. King Nebuchadnezzar must have been satisfied. Those who dared to defy his orders have been destroyed. Then suddenly, the king won on his, was on his feet, staring at the opening of the furnace. He shouted to his advisors that he saw four men walking around in the flames and that the fourth one looked like the son of God. No, the king was, wasn't just imagining things. He had been allowed to see with his own eyes that God takes care of his own. God was with, was with his three Hebrews in the flames. He is always with those who are persecuted for his name's sake. None is left alone. God will always stand for his people. The fire of the furnace had not hurt God's faithful followers. The flames had only consumed the robes that bound them. So in the last days, friend, God would deliver his people from even the persecution of spiritual Babylon. Notice how John described those who follow Jesus and his truth. It is written, And I saw, as it were, a sea of glass mingled with fire, and them that have gotten the victory over the beast, and over his image, and over his mark, and over the number of his name stand on the sea of glass having the harps of god revelation chapter 15 verse 2 even now god is pleading with his true followers to step out of counterfeit religious systems to follow him completely calling to his children still in spiritual babylon he says come out of here my people lest you share in her sins and lest you receive or her plagues. Revelation chapter 18, verse 4. God is calling his people. It costs something to choose to follow God. But Jesus promises to be with you. He promises to deliver you. He simply asks you to choose. He asks you to choose who you follow. Friend, won't you follow him? My friend, won't you choose his word, his commandments over the traditions and agents of man God through his Holy Spirit has been speaking to you through these presentations he's making his last call to a dying world to get ready for the second coming of his son another image is coming another sign of allegiance another test on the penalty of death but if there is anything clear about these prophecies it is that there will also again be men and women like the three Hebrews who will stand fearlessly and faithfully for the Savior they love. God will point to them as evidence that not everyone has bowed to the spiritual confusion of the devil deceptions. God will say, my friend, here is the patience of the saints. Here are those who keep the commandments of God and the faith of Jesus Christ. Revelation chapter 14, verse 12. Friend, I want to be part of that group. What about you, my friend? Do you want to be among those found worshipping the Savior when he returns? Do you want to receive his mark because you are worshipping him as he asks? If this is your desire, this are. Friend, wherever you are, I plead that you bow as we pray. Dear Father in heaven, we have studied a serious topic. We've looked at one of the sternest warnings in all of scripture. Lord, we know that these truths sometimes cut close to our hearts. 
Dear Lord, we know that if the devil's counterfeits weren't close to the truth, he wouldn't deceive nearly the entire world. And so this hour, we come to you asking for your help. We need your grace and your spirit to guide and strengthen us as we follow you. We want to obey you and not man. We want to receive your seal in our foreheads, not the mark of the beast. This hour, we ask you to make us a part of your commandment-keeping people. We ask that when you come again, you will be able to recognize us as your own. We pray that we will be able to point to each of us and say, Here is the endurance, the patience of the saints. Here are those who keep the commandments of God and the faith of Jesus. Dear Lord, may this be our experience. By your grace we pray in Jesus' name. Amen.